Uh, Jane, good morning to you. So nearly two months down the line, what's the update on the ground? Well, I mean, I have to say it's very calm this morning, and I was told a little bit earlier on that since the army has been deployed, but not in this area, but since you've seen an increased level of policing that it's got a lot safer. People are walking to work, which I was told is something that you wouldn't see in the, the recent past. But obviously the, the levels of crime and violence here are staggering with over 2,000 people killed this year alone. An eight-month-old baby was raped here in Bontaheville. So it really is endemic in society. We want to focus on the sort of difference that the army has made or not and, and how it's going down in society with the Western Cape Community Safety MEC Albert Fritz. What sort of impact, good morning to you first of all, what sort of impact has has it had? I think um, it's a bit early, but I f uh, if we look at the overall kind of impact, and from my view, where I have a helicopter view, one can clearly see that there was a kind of reduction in the kind of violence. Uh, we also, unfortunately, don't have operational uh, powers or command over the army. They report directly to the president, but I, I really think it helped, and I think um, we must say that. It really helped to stabilize a, a lot of the violence, although there was still violence going on. But isn't it just papering over a problem that is just completely, rampant here? I completely agree. And therefore, our approach in the province, um, led by the Premier, was to really start as the army comes in, because they're going to pull out in three months or in a few months' time, that we continue with our other collaborative work from all other departments, from the Department of Social Development, Economic Development, Sports and Culture, Community Safety, you know, housing, the way we design homes and houses and how do we do our new extensions. I think those were very, very important collaborative approach to really end the violence and to get people empowered so that they can feel dignified, they belong to a society and that we stop the violence. I mean, the, the reason people join gangs in the first place is that they don't feel dignified, that they feel that they've got a home there. And that's an important comment you're making because part one of our fun, where we're driving a, a really big campaign is getting youngsters through the Akrasilis Youth Programme. And Akrasilis Youth Programme is really where the youngsters already started to dabble with kind of substances, but we get them back and we really work with them for three months and you must see a lot of them are deployed within government, are deployed in private companies. Woolworths is one of the big companies taking them on. But it's giving a young person in a town to black bone to have an opportunity, an alternative to gangs, and I think that's the important part. And what about locals getting involved and, and raising the profile of policing? Because I believe that's been pretty successful here. Even though I have to say I spoke to a neighbor down the road here and he said it's it hasn't made a difference at all. Now we really believe. Um, and from where I'm standing as community safety MEC, firstly, we must get our community police forums back. We must get it right. Elections are coming now in September, and I'm happy to say it was our elections were accredited by the IC, so we're going to move on with that. Our neighborhood watches is an important component because they work in very small spaces in a very specific area as a neighborhood watch, really also empowering them, not only also doing safety work, but also the young people taking them to the mountain, youth camps for them. We are now professionalizing our neighborhood watches to do more than just marching and patrolling roads. But there's also the walking bus. A young parents, and I see a lady with a walking bus atop, walking children to school in the morning safely so that they can get to school safely and then often walking them back. So community collaboration, community involvement is fundamental. And does it go all the way to the top? I mean, you still got the squabbles at the top amongst the top cops. Uh, I mean, surely that must have a detrimental effect on what's going on here. Unfortunately, that was, I think, the situation. I know we now have a new acting um, commissioner. I must tell you, a great man, a man who's really Really have the world to move and is working with us as the Western Cape government. Uh, we must also still massage our relationship at the real and national with uh, Minister Becky Taylor. But I'm sure we will get it right because the people at the end, I think, are the most important people and their safety, our community safety, I think, mustn't let our little petty differences, um, you know, stop that. Has this situation been politicized to the point that it is very difficult to move on? I think there was a time when it was. Um, and I, I want to say some, I think, unfortunately, a number of our CPFs are kind of aligned to this party. And, and I, all parties must just stay out of it. 
And so let us get on to the business of keeping our community safe. Get proper democratically um, or democratic elections for community police forums. Get our neighborhood watches professionalized. And let us get our communities involved as part of the safety solution. Mm -hmm. And every community with a safety plan, I think that's where we're moving to. Right, let's leave it there. I'll be fits with that. Thank you. Safety plans. So, Kolu, you can see, I mean, safety plans are in place. The fact that everyone's slowly starting to speak to each other could possibly help. But until you deal with the grassroots issues like the lack of education, jobs and extreme poverty, you're not going to get anywhere here on the Cape Flats. Jane, thank you very much. A little more from Jane.